Hey guys, Don Wilderness the Great, Don Dolph the Grey. It's very hot right now. That's why I'm all silky and shiny. I wasn't going to get in on this because everyone's been bloody talking about it and I was actually going to make a really haunted video today. But I've seen so much shit about the Conjuring house. I just have to get on that wagon and yell. Say my stuff. Now, obviously, everyone in this community knows exactly what's going on with the Conjuring House. The staff who were the caretakers, so to speak, and the old, the tour guides, the runners, I don't know. The caretakers, right? The people who would, like, show you around and like, think, that's where, that's where Andrea Perrin dove through the window or something. Or some, I don't know. I don't know. Now, the Conjuring House movie has been one of my favourite horror films for a long, well, since it came out, actually. I think it's one of the best horror films ever made. It's really good. It is 99% bollocks. The film I'm talking about, based on, it says based on real events. I haven't seen anything in that film which has ever been based on actual events myself. I'm a skeptic, you know this. I haven't been to the Conjuring House. I do follow all the stuff that happens with it, mind. And I've been saying for years that the Conjuring House is just a house. It's just a house, right? Now, before we get into the, the, sh the shiznit, which has been going on recently. Couple of things which people always seem to look over when they like, oh, the Conjuring House is the most haunted place in Rhode Island or whatever. I don't know, the UA US, I don't know. But you look up any history of that house, which doesn't involve the parents or the Warrens or any, any people after that, nothing has ever happened there. The facts which people always spout off about Bathsheba Sherman is completely wrong, completely made up, I should say. You can look up all these facts anywhere online yourself, but if you go to a paranormal website about it, it's just going to repeat what the parents said about it. That's all it's going to say. But the actual facts, like, for example, Bathsheba Sherman, she was just a normal person who lived at the house and on, sorry, lived next door to the house in the early 1800s. And there was a lot of speculation about her being a witch. Uh, that she might have done her kids in. There's zero evidence of any of that stuff ever happening. The person, Bathsheba, is a real person, was a real person, I should say. She died in the mid-1800s. And, you know, the parents' story was always that she is the person haunting that place and making the demonic entities rise up in that place and all that shit. But it was actually the Warrens who first came up with the idea that it was Bathsheba Sherman. Now, I don't like to speak of the ill of the dead when it comes to the Warrens. They have been proven many times to be absolute frauds, right? It's just a fact. It's just a fact. No, no matter how much you like them, how much you know the Warren Society, I think it's still going, I don't know. It's just a fact. Majority of stuff that they have ever had in Whatever cases they've been involved in has always become, always come from Lorraine Warren and her psychic abilities. I'm not going to get into the psychic ability stuff. It is what it is, right? But the point is, a lot of the stuff was completely made up by the parents and the Warrens about what's happening or what's happened at the Conjuring House, the Rhode Island House. I think it's called the Arnold House. I don't know what it's called now. I have no idea. It's it's just an attraction right now. It's like a it's like a ghost event, you know, it's just like my haunted hotel. It's like that, basically. It's, it is what it is, right? <laughs> and like I said, a lot of the facts about the house, about the people who've lived there, um, are completely made up to for financial gain, if you ask me. I, I believe it was personally for financial gain. And like I said, the stuff with the Bathsheba Sherman, she was a real person. She was rumoured to be a witch, but... In the, you know, don't forget, this is the early 1800s. It wasn't long before that we were chucking people on the stake because we thought we were witches. That's how crazy we were back then. I'm not talking just America, I'm talking about the entire bloody world. Religion and faith back then, did we did some crazy shit over that. So for someone to be rumoured to be a witch, it's not completely far-fetched. There was this old, old woman when I was younger, when I was growing up in the 80s and 90s. She was always rumored to be, you know, into witchcraft and all that. And when you get older, yeah, witchcraft is a real thing, you know, for people who practice it, I suppose. When I got older, I realized she was just a lonely old lady who lived on her own. That's all she was. But when I was a kid, she, you know, she thought oh, that was the witch. Don't go near her house. It's not, there's nothing changed from the 1980s to the 1800s when it comes to that kind of stuff. You get people doing that all the time. Someone will say something and, you know, the whispers will get around town. There was no Facebook back in the 1800s, so, you know, that probably helped. 
But my point is, there's a lot of facts around that house, surrounding that house, surrounding the, the entire story, which is complete bullshit and just completely made up. Yet people still pay a lot of money to go there. A lot, I, I've gone on my own my own stuff with about the price of that place. It's ridiculous. It's a scam. It's a rip off. And this was before the the person who has it now. This was before she had it, by the way. It was still way too expensive. Way too expensive. 80 quid. If you want to charge 80 quid, fine. Not 1,500 bloody dollars or 2,000 dollars some people paid. It's ridiculous. But anyway, that's not why I'm making this video. <laughs> the latest stuff now with the staff of the Conjuring House and the owner Jacqueline. She's fired them all, sacked them all for various reasons, whatever. And she's been a bit of a shit to the staff. Now, first of all, right, I don't I I don't condone anyone talking to their staff like shit. No matter how bad you think they're doing a job or whatever you think of them, never be shit to your staff. I've been in a situation of having shit bosses and an absolute toxic, toxic uh, environment. And, you know, you think you can't get out of it and this just makes the workplace a terrible place to work. So I totally understand that side of it. And you know, no person should ever have, ever have to go through that from their boss or their managers, whatever. Obviously, Jason Hawes did a live the other day with all these former staff members. Um, Cody and Satori were there, obviously, Jason Hawes' daughter and son-in-law, who are you know, the, the psychics of the Conjuring House. You know, yet they were saying, oh, she's lying. <laughs> I'm not going to get into that stuff, right? <laughs> I j there's there's been a lot of pile on on the Conjuring House and like I said I've I've stayed out there mainly because I don't get myself involved in drama these days I can't be asked. I really can't be fucked myself more important things going on in my life but when I see something I thought I have to say something because I am part of this community believe it or not believe it or not I am part of this community she's got Jacqueline knows she's going off on bloody Facebook uh, like Twitter I even saw it uh, the other day and you know just saying the worst bloody things about these staff members. Like I said, nobody deserves that, no matter how many toe-tapping fake shit you do. But at the same time, I think, I think this Jacqueline person needs help. I, I truly believe that, because I've seen that in person um, growing up over the years, you know, with like friends and friends of those friends that where they're just absolute toxic and just spouting all kinds of bullshit. And you realize they're, they're actually going through some stuff and you know maybe they just need a bit of help maybe it's a cry for help who knows i don't know and i'm my worry is and this is why i usually don't get involved in this kind of stuff because like everyone every channel makes a video about it and i tend to stay out of it because i sort of see it as dog piling it's just the way i look at things you know just the way it is but i'm thinking she probably need, needs a bit of help with something maybe she's going through something and I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying you know she's innocent or nothing. She's absolutely tell, saying horrible things about everyone and being completely nuts about the stuff she's saying and the reasons she's firing people. But at the same time, maybe she needs, needs a bit of help. So you know, hopefully, maybe someone can get in touch with a family member of hers and like say, like, can you can you check in on her or something? I don't know. But I've seen some stuff recently now. I have to say some stuff about it. Now this guy recently uh, called Brian. I don't know who Brian is, but obviously the last like day or two I've seen people talk about it, I've seen people, people make videos about it. I see. I even saw Jason Hawes you know, post a video about this Brian guy. The Brian, he, I think he was one of the tour guides or the caretaker. I, I, like I said, I don't know enough about it, but he recently got fired from the Conjuring House because Jacqueline said that a 200 year old ghost called John, I guess John Ar Arnold, the former owner, Said are you stealing money? Because apparently Jacqueline's a psychic. I didn't know this, right? <laughs> Any sane person would say, that's fucking crazy. That is crazy that you would sack someone because a ghost told you. But then my little two-way brain <laughs> immediately thought, but hang on. Well, I'm, I'm a banger here now. Now, first of all, Brian should not have been sacked. It's ridiculous he got sacked in the first place. I hope he can work that out and apparently lawyers might be involved. It's ridiculous. Hopefully something works out for Brian. Right? I'll say that right now. But when I saw that, I thought, hang on now. Every person, group, paranormal group, uh, per people who have, you know, worked there, they've taken the word of psychics every single time they've gone to that house as facts. 
Cody and Satori, you look at them. They, they, they've done their bloody alphabet spaghetti stuff for a couple of years there now, and people gone there have believed every single word they've said. So why is it so different to Jacqueline, who's supposedly a psychic? Why is it different for her to say it, but yet we're, we're all right with them saying it, not us, but, you know, the people who go to the Conjuring House? I just, that was just a little funny thing that I noticed, which people are not saying. You know, it's just one of those things. I've recently seen some stuff now. Yeah, so I came across um, so, uh, one of the posts that this Jacqueline has posted. Just randomly came across on Twitter. I don't follow anyone about the Conjuring House on Twitter. I mean, obviously, Twitter knows I'm into the paranormal stuff. That's probably why you showed up. But this was from the Conjuring House. Now, I don't know if this is posted on Facebook. It's a screen capture. But this is the message, or one of the messages that Jacqueline has sent to whoever, I don't know. You stole $3,000 from TCH. It speaks for itself. The fact that you are starting a GoFundMe page is laughable. Tell TCH what laws we broke by firing someone who stood to make $100,000 per year as Vice President of Operations if he had only not stolen our money for merchandise sales. Do not contribute to his GoFund page. I don't care what you think about the owner of the TCH. Okay, that's obviously not Jacqueline. So I, I don't know who that is speaking because they're saying whatever the owner says and Jacqueline's the owner. So this can't be Jacqueline. I, I, like I said, I don't know enough about it. So whatever, but it's... It's crazy that this is going on about a place which, in my eyes, has always been a bloody scam anyway. That's what I think. You know, you could disagree with me, that's totally fine. In my eyes, the house has always been a bloody scam. Since the parents wrote books about it, and the Warrens went there and made up so much shit. <laughs> which you can fact check yourself, by the way. There's actually families who lived there before the parents, who had nothing. Nothing ever happened. One story is that it was a minister and his wife living there, and the people who've you know since said, "Oh, we got haunted," because it was there was another person called Norma, I think her name is. You know, she was discussing with Andrew Perrin, and, and you know, and they were asked about the minister who used to live there before them, and they said, you know, who who never ever said that there was anything weird going on, any paranormal stuff going on, and their answer was, "Oh, well, he's a minister; he's probably not allowed to say that." That is bullshit, <laughs> for a start, <laughs> that is bollocks. That is basically someone lived there, had a totally fine experience, and you know, nothing was there. And obviously when someone else took it over, saw a bit of, uh, bit of dollars wind up in their eyes, and that's how the Conjuring House legend came about. But I do find it a bit hypocritical that there's people calling certain people out in that house as being fake and making stuff up. When they themselves are making stuff up, or were making stuff up, and being proven to make stuff up, I find that extremely hypocritical. Like I said in live yesterday, it's, it's the Spider-Man pointing at Spider-Man, pointing at Spider-Man. You're fake, I'm real. You're fake, I'm real. It's the exact same thing going on right now. And this led me to another question in my brain, I had, right? So no, right? Now that it's, now that people are ca finally catching on that the Conjuring House is just a bloody scam, a sham, right? It, it is. For history wise, this is a cool place. It seems like a cool place for his real history I'm talking about now. Real history, okay? Seems like a cool place. But now people are finally cotton in on that the, the, the majority of the stories which were associated with paranormal stuff and paranormal happenings there are completely made up. So then does that mean all the paranormal teams who have gone there and have found demons have spoken to Abigail through Cody and Satori. Have spoken to Bathsheba. Well, not spoken, but you know, experienced Bathsheba's weird little shit. So all those paranormal channels are gone then now. And now, by proxy, outdid us complete and utter bloody bollocks. <laughs> That's what I think. Now, I'm not talking about the real channels who have gone there and like, you know, you know, cute to knock and whatever. I'm talking about people who said, there's a demon here. There's a portal to hell in this house. That kind of people. Sam and Colby. Twin paranormal. I don't know if Exploring with Josh found a demon. If he went with certain channels, he probably did. <laughs> Let's be honest. In fact, let's have a quick bloody gander, shall we? Now I did put in the title demon. I did. Because that's what I'm looking for. Uh, the night the demon trapped us. 
So the twin. So there you go. For all those deniers, twin paranormal are utter bloody bollocks. I mean, we knew that anyway, but you know. Beetle, he's never been there. <laughs> Amy's Crypt, Overnight with a Demon. Now, I, I, Amy's Crypt, I don't have a problem with Amy's Crypt. I think that the ghost tube is obviously bollocks. It's obviously bollocks and they made it. It's, it is what it is. And I haven't watched that episode, so I don't know if they were actually trapped with demons. Maybe I'll have to watch it and make that, you know, make that decision for myself. It's just the fact that all these channels now have made a living the night we talked to demons, Sam and Colby, Joe Vitale's place, at least he didn't put demon in. <laughs> I haven't watched that. I very much doubt uh, Joe Vitale found demons. I very much doubt that. Paranormal Files, demon caught on camera. So the people now who have found demons at the Conjuring House, after all these inf this information, which you can look up for yourself and fact check yourself, are they all bollocks? I mean, yeah, yeah. I know this. Most of us know this. But are they fans going to finally look at now? Hmm. You didn't actually catch a demon there, twins. <laughs> I just find it hilarious. Hilarious. That all these paranormal teams have gone to their house, found demons, spoke to Bathsheba, and you know, it turns out, oh no, it's actually bollocks. It was all made up by the Warrens and the Perrin family. I'm just being real here, folks. Don't hate on me for, for passing some information, okay? It's just a bloody thing. Jason Horse, did he find... Uh, oh no, that's not, sorry, that's not the country now. <laughs> there you go, the Grim Life Collective, I like that channel. I'm actually going to watch that um, video because they always do their research. I'm going to guess they didn't find demons, the Grim Life Collective. So I'm going to watch that because I really like their channel. Uh, Mythos, he didn't find demons. <laughs> Salmon Colby on ghost hunting in the country and that's demonic possession. Um, look, <laughs> I know people have made all kinds of videos about this and everyone's concerned about the staff and rightly so, you know. Like I said, don't be toxic to your staff members. You're a shit person if you are. But at the same time, this Jacqueline is possibly going through a mental episode or whatever other episode. Or maybe she needs a bit of help from a family member. I hope she can get it myself. I personally do hope she can get it because you, know, you never know what someone's going through. It's just a fact. But I do find it hilarious that everyone finds demons there when the story, the real story of the Conjuring House is completely made up. <laughs> Sorry, I mean the paranormal story about the Conjuring House is completely made up. I just find it is there's hypocrites everywhere around this now, surrounding this Conjuring House malarkey. There's hypocrites everywhere. They need to be called out if you ask me. I truly think so. People have called out Cody and Satori. You know, what are you going to do? They're never going to stop doing what they're doing. <laughs> they're never going to stop. They're bloody toe-tapping bollocks. I don't know. That's, that's all I really wanted to say. Maybe I said nothing at all. At all. Who knows? But, uh, you know, it's just the stuff I've been watching lately, you know, it's like, you fucking hypocrites. You know, you're, you're saying, oh, woe is me. And yet you're, 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 um, you're just exacerbating this entire paranormal bollocks surrounding that place and you know we're supposed to feel sorry for people i'm not gonna point the people out you know who we're talking about but i just find it massively hypocritical but i hope everything could be solved soon you know i think the conjuring house needs to be shut down myself i that's what i think if you want to if the best outcome for this is to shut it down have it as a listed historic building for what you know for the reason it's it's just old I mean, it's not that old. It's all the stuff here. I'm just saying. But as a paranormal experience, shut it down. Get rid of it. You know, don't go there. Don't pay the extortionate prices that uh, people are charging for that place. Don't believe pretty much anything people say about it when it comes to paranormal stuff about that place. It's a scam. It's a sham. And it's a shame because it seems like a nice house. I'd live there. I'd live there, no problem. But anyway, I'm rambling now. Absolute bollocks. And uh, yeah, I just wanted to say all that. So yeah. That's it. Hope you enjoyed. Leave a like if you liked this video. Leave a sub if you're new to my channel. I do this quite often. That's it. Thanks for watching and bye for now.